Google's new research says that all we know about deep learning in AI is just an illusion. That's why they're proposing nested learning, which is a new paradigm for having AI models continuously learn without forgetting what they already know. In this video, I'm going to show you how this concept works and get through the breakdown of this architecture in action. So let's check it out. This new research by Google is tackling mainly two things. First of all, how they can resolve catastrophe for getting AI models, which talks about when we teach AI new stuff, they might potentially forget what they already know. So how we can mitigate that. And second, how we can make them continue learning. In order to achieve this, they are saying that we need to shift how we look at deep learning architecture and even transformers. So we went through a nested learning, which is a new approach for machine learning that view models as a set of smaller nested optimization problems that each component has its own internal workflow and even memory. So let's through, go through the challenges first that they're tackling and then the details of nested learning. Right now, there is one very important problem with lots of language models, models like chat GPT stuff that you have used, which is causing having a server forgetting and is not letting us having these models continuously learn as we use them. Because right now, they have mainly two stages, which is pre-training pre knowledge and then the context window. So pre-trained knowledge is about all the huge amount of information that we have teach these models. We have already learned them so far. And as soon as that pre-training stage is done, so ChatGPT is ready, we cannot add new information to be learned by the model modify this long-term memory. It's frozen. It's blocked. But on the right side, we have this context video, which is managing short-term memory. Maybe some doing some fine-tuning or doing few shot learning within the prompt, which are okay to add some new stuff there, but they are not going to add anything to the whole that knowledge that has been already pre-trained with the model so with having this blocker being in place we have that continuous learning and even if we achieve continuous learning there is a great chance that we might affect what model has already ran, trained in long-term memory because we forced to teach some new stuff so we might sacrifice the previous performance of the model because we're enforcing to teach new model in pre-trained stage if you're able to do so so in order to mitigate this, they're proposing nested learning, which is really inspired from brain analogy and neuroscience. So if you think about human brain, we have different uh, waves that brain function, including gamma, beta, all the way to delta. And you can see some of them are pretty fast based on the frequency like gamma, and some of them are slower. So why do we need this and why they're acting differently? So if I increase this, the difference even clear, because sometimes our brain needs to think about something very quickly like let's say some sensory inputs that I want to say what's happening right now so I need to be very cautious and immediately react on something that's how and where my gamma waves are processing heavily in my brain but on the other hand over this is sort of the long-term memory something that I not need heavy processing right now or in short term learn something this is mainly let's say when you're sleeping you're in a deep sleep mode that's how your brain is functioning so they are considering ML models should be the same ML models should be interconnected components that they're learning individually but they're connected but their learning is in a different frequency and rate so let's say some portion of the models or components of the model should be updated every X amount of token, others should be updated by amount of token as we use or feed new data to the models. So with having this concept in place, now we are introducing nested layers and levels of components to a new language, uh, machine learning model, not just considering them as a flat layers of um, MLP or feed forward neural network that they focus on just one or two specific dimensions. So think about traditional deep learning, which is also inherited within also inside transformer architectures. We just have this stack layers, layer one, two, three, all the way so far, maybe to hundreds or thousands. And within the training, we show some inputs on training data, the batch sizes, and then through back propagation, we update these parameters and weights. So we don't care about if that input was something for being learned on a long-term memory or short-term memory. So we are treating all type of inputs with the same way and that's how we are not really distinguishing 
what portion of the model should be learned based on what type of data and how it should be learned. But in human brain, it's totally different. We are threading different inputs differently. We, we automatically push some of them to our short-term memory or long-term memory, and we go back and update our long-term memory. We might forget some stuff. We might remember some stuff. So that's why that whole vision of treating everything the same through this traditional deep learning architecture and through that grading calculation and updating weights and parameters is not really the most efficient way for considering that continuous learning and also resolving catastrophic forgotten. But if we shift this to nested learning, this is how it's going to look. Instead of having that stack layers, we have different modules within our ML architecture that they're each updating themselves and learning with different frequency rate. For example, check this level three or module C that can be updating a parameter or weights, or it can be an optimizer by itself because they're saying that optimizer within machine learning models are also even learners by themselves, which we're gonna talk about that in detail shortly. So that one maybe update itself pretty fast in different frequency, but module B in level two, which is not that it's itself and level one level three or module a b c are in a hierarchy so they're nested and connected together if any update with a very fast frequency have haven't happened to model c not only it's changed itself but also it is changing what has been already learned on module b and also module a as well so they are connected nested but they're in different layers and they all have their own context flow and learning rate and the frequency of how they're themselves instead of again having just a flat architecture the whole this nested learning concept is fundamentally based on this associative memory which is again inherent from the psychology of human brain when we memorize some stuff we usually use you do it through associative memory for example i remember maybe or faces associated with names or the sound of for example here animals with the animal name so they're saying that all these blocks of nested architecture we talked about already, they are sort of learning through this associative memory. The good example of that is in self-attention mechanism in transformers that we have this association of key or values, which is the, the token, which I would explain a lot in different videos already. So that attention mechanism is trying to map these input output tokens through key and value to predict potentially next token or consider how much to pass it should consider for predicting the next one so same thing even for other components of the models let's say optimizers are trying to learn and map uh, how much they should change the parameters or weights of the model different layers considering that grading updates and the new input that is coming in so with having that associative memory in mind now we can understand better that this nested learning is talking about models are nested levels of components that they are all learning by themselves and they have also memory so to give you an example or a proof let's talk about optimizer not just the layers of the neural network or models in general so in optimizers, they're saying that we already have a proof that this nested learning concept works without even trying it because we already have this concept in some of the components of our AI models. For example, in optimizers, um, we start with just very naive first level updates, which is when we are training a model based on loss function calculation, which is the difference between what model predicted and what the reality was. So obviously, we're going to have this difference to be low. Uh, but always there's a difference. So based on the difference, which is the loss function output, go back and update my models and update my model parameters and weights. But this is just one level. To be better, we can add momentum. So what is momentum? Momentum says that I'm not going to just simply update based on the loss function. I want to also consider the gradients of previous gradients of iteration. So I know previously how that updating, updating of that parameter of weights was behaving through the past gradients, then I update it based on the new loss calculation. So we are now giving this level two of nested associative memory to consider also the mapping of previous gradients and then the new gradient. I'm not just naively go and update sharply and savagely based on the new input coming in. To make it even better, we go to another nested layer, which is level three or atom optimizer. So atom consider momentum and variance also of the previous gradients. We have new nested dimensions to update all these parameters more intelligently, not just based on the loss function. And this is really the concept of nested learning. This is the associative memory of an optimizer by itself that has sort of a memory by itself. 
it's sort of considering the past gradients or past parameters how we in past updates um, the weights or parameters of the model so if you think about it we are dealing with sort of a learning component which has that associated memory by itself maybe that's why the atom optimizer which is sort of a nested learning is pretty successful all right so how this concept works in more recent architectures namely transformers which are really empowering all these language models and chatbots or what we know mostly as ai recently well if you think about currently how the transformer works we can consider that they have two components one which we have this feed forward neural network that we usually use it for having that long-term memory or that pre-trained stage getting learned this is the part that i told you it's frozen we have vast amount of data that the model has ran through this FFN or feed forward neural network and we cannot really touch or change it. But then on the second layer, we have this attention layer, which is for short term memory and high frequency updates. But in order to have it again, based on nested learning, they're proposing a new architecture called hope. So how hope works, hope is sort of a model that has been created mainly on four learnable components that they are nested through the nested learning architecture that we already discussed and these four layers are learnable through different frequency of rate of so level one which is the low frequency let's say again conceptually model will update part of itself by every 60 million tokens level two mid frequency memory that it update itself or learn on each 1 million token similarly for for example level 3 or level high level 4 you can see that these different components again this is not just a rigid architecture the whole concept can be applied with different modifications it's a self-modifying recurrent network that each component by itself has different rate of getting updated and learned through different type of inputs now did they tested this new architecture which is called hope the answer is yes and here's the results as they are noting that in the in the blog they tested this architecture compared to some of the state of the art architectures and transformers in tasks like common sense reasoning task. And they showed that continuously hope, which is this color, got much more better results. Let's say in accuracy, you can see that this one got the highest one compared to the others. And even for showcasing sort of that memory management in long term context, as we discussed, they provided this uh, reason. They can handle extended sequence of information on long context tasks with different level of difficulties between again hope and some other architectures and again you can see that hope is really beating that all so what is the key takeaway here the main key takeaway here is that we should really shift how we see deep learning as a stack layers we might think about that if you want to create much more intelligent models that you can continuously learn without forgetting everything is stuff you might maybe need, need, you need to just add more stack layers deeper but the answer is maybe wrong. We need, need to just have that machine learning models considered as a stacked learning process components. So more levers interconnect. They have their own rate of learning and even that own memory. This shift of how we see AI models that can potentially empower us to have self-improved AI models that they can continuously learn even as we use them. That was all about this new research blog by Google Research Team. I hope you found this helpful. If yes, I would be very thankful if you can share your thoughts or comments in the comment section below. And like icon and subscribe so you won't miss the next video. We'll see you in the next one.